as um, as medical student and resident, you're exposed to a lot of different uh, branches of medicine. At the time, particularly when I was going through that in the early 70s, there were so many uh, exciting advances, particularly in cancer, that uh, I thought it, you know, initially the most exciting field intellectually, and then as you get involved in it, it also um, dealing with the patients personally is just a very rewarding field. What was so exciting to see in the 1970s, the beginnings of technologies that allowed us to look inside of cells at their genes, at the genetic structure almost part by part, and, and the things you could see that were starting to develop allow us to, uh, now there's a genome project, the entire human genome we've mapped. We've got the ability to, to look at different parts of cells, know why cells divide, why they uh, why they live, why they die, and why the, in our case, why cancer cells uh, don't die, why they go along like zombies, and, and that sort of thing now uh, is really remarkable. It's almost science fiction, the, the sort of changes we've seen in 30 years. Certainly we have the exciting thing that we can cure uh, patients now a lot more than we did before, but you always, uh, cancer is just part of the walk of life. If you can help people, if you're uh, even in situations where you can't eradicate the disease, that you can do things that uh, as a physician and as a human being are, uh, are very important. As an oncologist, when you, you see a patient, you see a person who has their life, their plans, everything they were planning to do and thinking to do all of a sudden has been tossed in disarray. Their life's been rewritten. Everything that they they thought was important is now unimportant. Uh, and at that point, uh, when people are uh, frightened and disoriented, to be able to help some, to be able to, uh, uh, to, what, to the extent possible to assist with that is uh, very rewarding.